from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is 6 a.m. and it is Saturday, April 20th. Good morning. Yeah, we have a special guest <laughs> in the house on the weekends. Remember her, Stephanie Sardar? Remember you used to do the weekends? Yeah, I was like, oh, wow, it's 6, not 5. <laughs> <laughs> like just one extra hour. Of yeah, sleep. yeah. We're it, so happy it works to have out. you. I'm happy to be here. And I so I walked in and it was pretty cool because I see festive outfits for Fiesta. And of course, Sarah Swivey. Fiesta! The Sarah is looking very beautiful. I'm excited. And <laughs> yeah. we're so excited to have you this I'm morning, bringing here. the energy. Yeah, we're all morning people. So uh, good morning if you're waking up <laughs> with us and catch the fact that it's a little bit more exciting this morning. As we take a look at storm chances, I do want to mention that today our best chances for storms are after 5 p.m. So for the first part of the day today, it's going to be relatively quiet. One or two hit or miss showers, yes, but it's after 5 p.m. that we really start to see storms work their way into San Antonio. So if you have outdoor plans, the time frame to really be aware of is after 5 p.m. for disruptive weather. And so as we look at our Fiesta weekend forecast, 70% chance for storms after 5 p.m. It's going to be mainly a pretty humid day before 5 p.m. But then a front moves through and that sets up a breezy and much cooler Sunday. Our high tomorrow is only going to be 64 degrees with low humidity and a breezy wind. Now with these storms tonight, there are a couple of things I want you to be aware of when it comes to the potential for severe weather. We'll talk about that coming up in just the next few minutes. Sarah, Stephanie. Sarah, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman is dead following a motorcycle crash overnight. It happened around 2 o'clock this morning in the area of Highway 90 and General McMullen. Police say a man and a woman were riding on the motorcycle when it was sideswiped. Police say both riders were thrown from the motorcycle. The male driver was taken to the hospital with serious injuries, and SAPD says the woman had severe head trauma and died at the scene. So far, it's not known if the driver of the vehicle stayed to help. The area was shut down for several hours overnight. And this is a big traffic alert that we got from TxDOT this week. And in addition to Fiesta closures in and around downtown on top of Fiesta traffic, construction is scheduled on 1604 and I-10. So closures in the area were put in place a little over an hour ago. That's what we're told. This will impact you if you are on the city's northwest side of town. The weather could also affect this, but so far the lanes are expected to reopen on Monday morning at 5 a.m. So if you need more time to look at this, we have a full breakdown of closures and detours right now on KSAT.com and the case set out. Well, the San Antonio Police Department is using the sky to increase safety at this year's Fiesta events. Our Avery Everett shows us how the party is still going, but safety is still top of mind. Fiesta can be loud. Rides, music and laughter. <laughs> But if you listen closely, you'll hear the San Antonio Police Department taking its patrolling to new heights. Oh, we're staying ahead of the curve. We're just trying to keep everybody safe. SAPD is using drones during Fiesta this year to help traffic and crowd control. We can get officers there even faster, keep people safer. How is it a unique tool for SAPD? It's a unique tool because, well, first and foremost, we're about officer safety. So it's just another tool we get to use um, to keep them safe. So over the next 10 days, this part of the Alamo Dome parking lot will become SAPD's Fiesta substation. This will be their home base to keep an eye on all of the Fiesta events. And the drone gives them a new perspective to seeing San Antonio. We're embracing new technology to be able to do that. Right now, we're looking at an overview of Carnival. So that's us. That's us. From 400 feet away, that's the view you all have. That's us. Wow. You can see all the can confetti in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got great zoom. I mean, that's obviously a huge feature. And that's what helps us, uh, you know, with traffic control, with uh, crowd control, everything like that. You'll still see police officers on the ground at events. But SAPD says they're keeping a close eye on both the streets and the skies this Fiesta season. There's so much more of Fiesta to have, and there's so much more fun. But SAPD does want to emphasize that if you see something suspicious, say something. That's the best way to keep all of us out here safe. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. And Fiesta runs through April 28th. Here are some of the events happening today. Of course, the Fiesta Oyster Bait continues at St. Mary's University. You also have the Taste New Orleans happening at the Sunken Garden Theater. That's one of my favorites. And the San Jacinto Victory Celebration will be at the Alamo. 
You can ch also check out all the UTSA Fiesta Arts Fair for a complete list of shows, events, and day-by-day -day play schedule. Just head over to ksat.com for all of your Fiesta events. Well, KSAT has a chance for you to enjoy a special party at the Battle of Flowers and the Flambeau Parade. So you can scan one of these QR codes to buy tickets. That includes assigned seating along the parade route, food, drinks, and a chance to hang out with some of us. We get to meet you guys. While you're at it, you can also sign up to be a KSAT insider to be the first to get access to special events like these in the future. In Washington, the House is preparing to vote on approval of a $95 billion, billion dollars in foreign aid for U Ukraine, Israel, and other U.S. allies. House Speaker Mike Johnson relied on Democratic support this week to bring a series of three votes on the aid packages, as well as a fourth on several other foreign policy proposals. Several Republican lawmakers disagree with how the money is being spent. The Senate would still need to approve the House bill in votes expected next week. Country music star Morgan Wallen is breaking his silence about his arrest in Nashville earlier this month. Wallen was arrested after he was accused of throwing a chair from the rooftop of the Chiefs bar, six stories high. In a statement shared on social media and with CNN, Wallen says, quote, I'm not proud of my behavior and I accept responsibility, end quote. He also says he wanted to make amends first before commenting on that incident. He says he has reached out to the Nashville Police Department and the staff at that bar. Wallen faces three felony counts of reckless endangerment and one count of disorderly conduct. He is due in court on May 3rd. This morning, over 6,000 people will head to Palo Alto College for the Any Baby Can Walk for Autism, their official Fiesta event. All proceeds from the walk will stay in Texas and provide one-of-a-kind services that help support families raising individuals who are on the spectrum. The vet festivities begin at 8 a.m. and Tiffany Huertas will be emceeing the event. You can find out more about this walk. Just head to our KSAT community page of our website. You still have time to get out there. Time now, 6.07 and about 69 degrees for now. This year's theme for Earth Day is Planet versus Plastics. Up next, how to take plastics out of gardening and what you can replace it with. Microplastics are making us sick. How? When they break down into our soil, they release toxic chemicals that end up in our food, water, or even in the air we breathe. This year's theme for Earth Day is planet versus plastics. So here are some alternative ways to keep plastic out of the garden and out of our soil. Your lawn kinda sucks, don't want it. Don't replace it with turf. That's a lot of plastic in the soil. Plus it gets really hot and harbors a lot of bacteria. Replace it with native plant beds and mulch. When making a flower bed or using mulch, never line with plastic or even fabric, which can have tiny bits of plastic in it. It will make a mess later and chokes the health of your soil. Mulch naturally fights weeds and feeds the soil with its micronutrients. And if you have a weed, just pull it. You can find native mulch at Rainbow Gardens and many more alternatives. Replace plastic pots with terracotta, clays, or even cocoa baskets, which are lined with coconut fibers and are 100% biodegradable. Get rid of those pesky plastic bags and make your own fertilizer, aka compost, by taking your old food scraps and letting nature do its thing. On my Instagram and ksat.com, you can find the story where I show you how to build your own compost bin for under 40 bucks. Love it, Sarah. You know, my gardening queen. Just trying. It, You're it, so good. And I noticed you have a different hairstyle because it's so humid out there. Oh my you gosh! Your this hair week, you had to do like the alien buns. This week, I love the alien. Yeah, I love them too. I'm leaning real hard into it. You know. Yeah, they're, they're like, good for running too. You know. <laughs> thank you, ladies. Um, no, it's been so humid where like you walk out, you feel it the back of your neck. To, today, it it lightened up just a teeny yeah. bit, Sarah, with a little bit of that breeze. Yeah, but it's going to be humid for most of the day today. So much so, in fact, that we are going to be looking at a chance, a good chance for rain, mainly after 5 p.m. today. Now, I know a lot of people have plans for Fiesta, so I want to break this down for you. In your KSAT 12-hour forecast, the first part of the day here is going to be fairly quiet. Yeah, you may run into an isolated shower, some patches of drizzle, but really the first part of the day, even into the early afternoon, we're not going to see much rain. Now, by the later afternoon, and particularly after 5 p.m., that's when scattered showers and storms are going to be 
be out there with even a few stronger storms embedded possible. So if you have evening plans outdoors, those will likely be disrupted by storms and the high temperature today will be 79 before temperatures tumble into the low 60s and upper 50s behind that front. So here's a look at the weather headlines. What do you need to know before 5 p.m. today? Mainly just humid some spotty rain possible after 5 p.m. Storms are likely and disruptive to outdoor plans, but because of the cool front tomorrow is actually going to be very pleasant, much cooler with low humidity. Let's start with that first headline humid right now. It's 68 degrees outside in San Antonio, 72 in Pleasant and 74 in Del Rio, 73 in Catula and 71 in Beeville. But you're feeling every degree because humidity is pretty high. Dew points are in the 60s. That is definitely muggy. Even some dew points in the 70s, oppressively humid. As we take a look across the state of Texas, you can see the drier air in the panhandle and the humid air kind of banking up against that drier air right near the Dallas Fort Worth area. That's where we've got the areas of storms right now happening across parts of Dallas. And some of these are on the stronger side. So as that drier air sinks south, that's going to interact with that humid air. And that's when we'll see a few storms blossom. Here's a look at the future cast. Again, fairly quiet for the first part of the day. It isn't until the afternoon and late afternoon that we start to see some storms blossom across the hill country. Yes, one or two are possible in San Antonio, but it isn't until after 5 p.m. that we'll start to see more storms around the San Antonio metro area and into the hill country. Now, within this cluster of storms, there's likely to be a few embedded stronger storms capable of gusty winds and even some localized heavy rainfall as well. Well, that'll continue until about 10 o'clock and midnight tonight when most of the rain will be over by midnight and into the overnight hours. And then tomorrow is again just going to be a cooler day. How much rain could we see? Well, more than likely you're going to get half an inch of rain today, but there will be a few neighborhoods that see more than an inch of rainfall, potentially pockets of two plus inches, but those are the luckiest of the neighborhoods. Widespread half an inch of rain, luckiest neighborhoods, an inch of rain or more. So plan for a muggy day today, plan for those storms developing mainly after 5 p.m. What we will be watching for is localized flooding issues. A lot of rain in one location could lead to localized flooding issues. We'll be watching that if a stronger storm develops, gusty winds of up to 60 miles per hour and quarter sized hail are going to be possible with any severe storms that develop. We will be watching that carefully. The KSAT Weather Authority app is going to be nifty to have today if you're heading out to Fiesta events because we will go live right to your phone. Now behind that front, tomorrow's going to be a really pleasant day. Cool, low humidity, high of only 64. Maybe you'll need to bust out a sweater. And then for the river parade on Monday, beautiful, low humidity humidity, high temperature of 74. Humidity works its way back in in the week ahead, but we'll only have isolated rain by Friday. So again, I hope you get some good rain today. I know it comes on the weekend when a right. lot of us are trying to enjoy Fiesta festivities, but we really won't see much rain until after 5 p.m. Okay. That's the key point. Okay. Well, that's good news. Try to get all our fiesta during the day. Yeah, and in speaking of fiesta events, I have an oyster bake forecast for you coming up in oh, just a bit. I love the low humidity for the river parade. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. <sighs> that's good news. Thank mm -hmm. you, Sarah. Sarah, it's 616 and 68 degrees. Well, straight ahead, just like everyone else in the family, your furry members may need health insurance too. Veterinary medical bills can be overwhelming for pet owners without coverage. What it can cover, where to get it, and what's the best coverage plan? That's coming up next. Well, they're definitely members of the family, and those veterinary bills for Fido and Fifi can add up, or for Scooby and Sister in my case. So what about pet insurance? Does it save you money on checkups and emergencies? Yeah, well, 12 on your side's Marilyn Ward says, before you buy it, there are other ways to save on medical care for your pet. Paulina Vargas has had pet insurance before, but now with Nigel and Bella, she decided to skip it. It makes more sense for us to really not to be paying monthly fees, right, at the pet insurance. And uh, we decided to really, was the best option for us, just to pay it, uh, you know, out of pocket. She's not the only one. A Consumer Report survey found pet owners are pretty unhappy with pet insurance coverage. Over 2,000 members shared their experience with pet insurance covering everything from what's actually covered to the premiums they paid 
and the claims process for getting reimbursed. And overall, there was no real top dog. In fact, most of the results found that the insurance companies were all pretty middle of the pack. The survey revealed pet parents were paying an average $47 a month per pet. Six providers got a mid-range satisfaction score and two got unfavorable ratings. As an alternative, Brian Vine suggests putting what you would spend on the insurance premium into a dedicated savings account. Self-insuring by putting away money every month into a direct deposit high yield savings account that you can draw from should your fur baby need some medical assistance. If your pet needs medicine, shop around. It can be cheaper to order online from places like Chewy, Petco, Pet Meds, and Walmart's Pet Pharmacy. Just like you can see the doctor over telehealth for certain conditions, your pet can also see the virtual vet. Two popular sites to do that are POP and Bond Vet. Of course, it's for non-emergencies. We have been very lucky. They're very healthy and uh, they're happy. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Welcome back. The city of San Antonio has had permits for horse-drawn carriages since 1865, but now some are debating whether or not they still have a place on our downtown streets. So the city council is beginning the process of considering a potential ban. However, City Hall reporter Garrett Berenger says the local operators want the city to hold its horses. My horses go home every day, so they have pasture time every day. Stephanie Garcia owns two of the five carriage companies in San Antonio. Small businesses that revolve around their biggest employees. So yeah. As you can see, they just come straight for attention. They just love all the loving. But the future of those carriage companies is in question. Back in November 22, a pair of council members proposed a horse-drawn carriage ban, an idea that's only now making its way to the committee process. I'll admit I thought the request had been killed, but I'm always down for a surprise. 16 months ago, the proposal was for a total ban. But today, one of the sponsors, Jalen McKee Rodriguez, suggested moving the carriages to parks or somewhere else off the streets could also be acceptable. Many people romanticize the idea of horse-drawn carriages in San Antonio, but the reality is that they don't belong in our city streets, especially not downtown. Band supporters argue it's an issue of animal welfare and safety on the increasingly crowded downtown streets. I can't be a city council person that in good faith says, you know what, let's just keep doing it the way we've always done and risk viral videos of horses dropping dead downtown. But carriage company operators say the city hasn't made an effort to engage them. Once again, we're trying to be brushed under the rug and have changes made without bringing it to a discussion like we were promised eight, 16 months ago. Today's meeting doesn't do anything more than kick the issue to a new committee. The specifics of any potential ban would still have to be worked out. What are your feelings about the process moving forward and what you think is going to happen? I'm hoping that they're going to come to the table and sit down and discuss things with us and speak to our experts, our vets, or the, the animal care services and see how we work. We can't just move on and ignore what we're saying and our views. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. It's 627 and 68 degrees. Well, a lot of Fiesta events are happening, including the Oyster Bake. Just ahead, how the event is funding local scholarships. Good morning. It is 630 on this Saturday, April 20th, and we have a special guest joining us. Oh, thanks. Stephanie Serna. Good morning. Good yeah. to have you with us. It's a ladies show. A ladies show and also a Fiesta Saturday show. So excited about that. Love Fiesta. Um, okay. Oyster Bake or mm. Taste of New Orleans? Which one do you like better? Well, I need to go to Taste of New Orleans. How many years have you been here, Stephanie? Well, I mean, I grew up here, and for some <laughs> reason, <laughs> I just never made it out to that one yet. I know my parents loved it. It's, they went all the time. Yeah, Taste yeah. of New Orleans is good. The food is very, very good. And today, Sarah, is a good day to go out to Oyster Bake or Taste of New Orleans. Maybe some light showers. Yeah, I think the thing to keep in mind is it's not going to be great in the evening for these events because we expect storms after 5 p.m. Now, before 5 p.m. should be good. Let's go ahead and take a look at the forecast specifically for Oyster Bay today from noon to 11 p.m. at St. Mary's University. Again, not expecting much in the rain department until after 5 p.m., but we know a lot of people like to be out there late, so keep that in mind. There will be some storms after 5 p.m. around the San Antonio metro area. In fact, 
take a look at our weather headlines for the day today. Before 5 p.m., it's going to be humid. There will be some areas of spotty rain, but it isn't until after 5 p.m. that we start to see storms become likely, which will be disruptive to outdoor plans. However, the storms are a result of a cool front. So looking at tomorrow's forecast, it's going to be much cooler. We'll be in the 60s tomorrow and there will be low humidity. So a little bit of rain means a good amount of nice weather tomorrow and Monday. I'll give you the details on what kind of things we need to watch out for with tonight's storms, including severe weather coming up in just a bit. Sarah, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Well, local counties are more rabies. We have more rabies cases. However, a state veterinarian says it's not quite enough to call it a spike. Less than four months into 2024 and some nearby counties already have about as many or even more rabies cases than they had in previous years. Kerr County says it's had eight cases so far, double what it had in all of last year. Bear County has not seen the same sort of bump. There have only been three cases reported this year compared to 11 in both 2023 and 2022. The first criminal trial of a former president is set for its opening statements this Monday. A full 12 person jury, along with six alternatives, was finalized in former President Trump's New York hush money trial yesterday. The trial judge also held what's called a Sandoval hearing. So that addresses a defendant's criminal history and how much prosecutors can ask about that if that person testifies. Trump has indicated he intends to testify, which triggered the hearing. The judge will give his decision on the matter on Monday. And a pathway for foreign aid to Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan is almost clear with final votes set for later today on the passage of $95 billion in foreign assistance. However, as ABC's Allison Kosick reports, some lawmakers are opposing the measure and threatening to oust House Speaker. Foreign aid to Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan is one step closer to passing after months of delays. Friday, the chamber voted 316 to 94 to advance the bills, setting up today's vote on the final passage of $95 billion in foreign assistance, which also includes conservative priorities such as a TikTok ban bill and sanctions on Iran. This is a major victory for House Speaker Mike Johnson. This is the best possible product that we can get under these circumstances. In a rare move, Democrats voting to save Johnson's plan after dozens of Republicans oppose the legislation. Democrats blasting Republicans for failing to back a package crafted by their own speaker. We're willing to lead. We're willing to govern. We're willing to do the people's business. Ronald Reagan would roll over in his grave if he saw what's going on here with the Republican Party. That bipartisanship making far-right Republicans even angrier as a third joins calls for Johnson to step aside. Those Republicans seeking tougher border security before any more aid goes to Ukraine. But some of those same Republicans blocked a Senate border security deal supported by both Democrats and Republicans just weeks ago after coming under pressure from Donald Trump. Allison Kosick, ABC News, New York. Well, it's a fiesta tradition. We're talking about the annual crowning of El Refeo or the Ugly King. John McFadden, El Rey Fail is 75, of course, of El Rey Fail 75, of course. Rey Fail is also known as the People's King and is one of the nine mem members of the official Fiesta Royalty. There he is getting crowned. The crowning of El Rey Fail comes with food, music, and fun for all. Well, the first night of Oyster Bake is a wrap at St. Mary's, but there's a whole other day of fun ahead today. And that money raised goes back to the students helping fund scholarships and programs. Our Daniela Ibarra and photojournalist Matthew Craig takes us there to feel the heartbeat of Fiesta. So I've never been to Oyster Bake, so do you have any pro tips? Yeah, eat, eat, and eat some more. This is my first one. You just slurp it up? You're gonna enjoy it. There's there's anything and everything that you want to try. Morning, ago. Taste, experience, this is where to do it. How do you recommend getting it? Everything. Yeah. Okay, I'll try everything then. It has mayo, cheese, uh, tahini, butter, and lemon. Morning, ago. This is where the magic happens. 
Okay. This is where everything occurs for chicken on a stick. This is your first oyster shot of the night? Yes. What was it like? It was great. I mean, uh, you, you can't experience anything better during, you know, PS Oyster Bake. Are you planning on getting any oysters? Oh, yeah, we're waiting, we're waiting. for them. How do you eat one? Oh, you definitely got to eat it with a cracker, with a saltine cracker, and with Tabasco sauce, and it's going to go down like smooth. you wouldn't believe. Smooth, Good. yeah. All my coworkers make fun of me because I'm a picky eater, so I'm like bracing for it. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's it's an acquired taste. Mm -hmm. It is. Viva Fiesta! What's your favorite part of Fiesta? The snow cone. The snow cone. Loud. What's the best flavor? Cherry. And what are you going to do after this? I don't know. It's a great opportunity to spend time with your classmates, with your friends. Everything we do here is to raise money for, for scholarships for students. What makes Oyster Bake special? I think it's like a family atmosphere. At least to Friday nights, it's family. It's all about the family, and the students here, they're part of your family. Viva Fiesta! It's the slow-mo for me. <laughs> Aw, the fun will continue today. Viva Fiesta. Yeah, everyone be safe out there. Yes. Um, yeah. Oyster Bake, always a good time. It's 638 and 68 degrees. We got there with a live cam. So it was actually not that bad this morning walking to my car. I don't know why I was expecting the full-on humidity, but I the hear it's going to be. The last couple of days it was like. Yeah, exactly. But later on, it's going to be a little humid. That's what uh, Sarah's telling us. and so She kind of knows what she's talking yeah. about. Yeah, <laughs> we'll listen to her and we'll check in with her in just a minute. Welcome back. A lot of people in town this weekend. Yeah. Everyone is excited to celebrate yes. Fiesta. And just like in Fiesta fashion, San Antonio has spring weather with some spring showers. Yeah, and even some spring-like strong storms possible later on today, too. So I want to give you a timeline of what okay. you can expect. Okay. So for the first part of the day here, it's going to be relatively quiet. Yeah, you may run into one or two stray showers, but notice rain chances from this morning into the uh, early afternoon really only at about 20 to 30 percent. It's after 5 p.m. that we start to see storm chances really tick up. Uh, and in fact, after 5 p.m., chance for storms are about 70%. So widespread storms are expected after 5 p.m. Outside right now, though, it's just pretty much humid and fairly quiet. It's 68 degrees, 63 in Bernie, 69 in Rio Medina, 67 in New Braunfels, 72 in Pleasanton. As we take a look at the weather across the state of Texas, uh, you can see that there's quite a few storms from Dallas down to San Angelo. This is where that drier air is meeting the more humid air. And so showers and storms are blossoming from San Angelo up to Dallas Fort Worth. We're going to see showers and storms blossom in San Antonio after 5 p.m. So in your KSAT 12 hour forecast, only isolated rain through lunch where temperatures will be in the mid 70s by noon. In the afternoon, we'll briefly get to the upper 70s. And then after 5 p.m., 70% chance for showers and storms. Uh, and temperatures will drop pretty quickly too as we see winds turn around to the northeast and a cool front moves in. So it's going to be cool and stormy later on tonight. In fact, here's a look at the future cast. You can see that come together pretty nicely. This is a look at four o'clock in the afternoon. Again, one or two isolated storms around San Antonio, but more organized storms start to develop across the hill country, Rock Springs, Kerrville, Fredericksburg. Then after 5 p.m., that's when storms become more numerous around the San Antonio metro area. We're going to have a cluster of storms and embedded in there could be one or two stronger storms capable of gusty winds and perhaps even some pockets of hail. We'll keep you posted about that. By 10 o'clock, most of the rain should be ending and in the overnight hours, we'll see rain come to a complete end. So if you are a light sleeper, you won't need to worry about thunder and lightning in the overnight hours. Rain will be coming to an end. How much rain could could we see? Well, widespread, we're definitely going to get at least half an inch of rainfall in many neighborhoods. The luckiest neighborhoods will get more than an inch of rain. The way these showers and storms cluster, there will be those that get more rain and those that miss out on the higher amounts of rainfall. But it is possible even to see a few pockets of two plus inches of rain, which would could potentially lead to localized flooding issues. So 
Here's what you need to know for today. Just to recap, plan for a muggy day and plan for scattered storms to develop mainly after 5 p.m. What we will be watching for and keeping you posted about are localized flooding issues. There's going to be a lot of people out and about later on tonight after 5 p.m. We'll keep you posted on that and storms that become strong could produce gusty winds of up to 60 miles per hour and maybe even some quarter sized hail. These are things we're going to be watching for and I want you to download the KSAT Weather Authority app if you have plans outdoors tonight because we will go live right to your phone and there's a radar on there. If you're not around your TV, you can't turn on KSAT. You can get that information right on your phone, the KSAT Weather Authority app. Behind that front, it's going to be very pleasant tomorrow and even a lot cooler high of only 64 and windy on Monday. It's going to be a really nice day, a cool morning, comfortable afternoon in the mid 70s with low humidity, great weather for the river parade. And then for most of next week, we'll be looking at humidity working its way back in only isolated rain in the forecast as we head around the corner into next weekend. So tonight, after 5 p.m., our highest potential for storms for the next several days. And I can't stress it enough. You don't want to be caught off guard if you're going to be out and about tonight. Yeah. Make sure you have a way to quickly duck inside if a storm pops up over you. You know what? In San Antonio, those storms sometimes can be like so quick. Just True. bring a poncho or we never we have such fiesta spirit. If you don't want to, if you want to keep party, <laughs> yes, bring your rain boots. Just bring your rain boots. I will yeah. bring an umbrella. So yeah. if you do get a severe thunderstorm warning, find some shelter go inside. Yeah. She was Depending like, on don't listen to Sarah. Please go inside. <laughs> I'm like, I'll party be on. Safe. <laughs> Sarah's like, I'm trying to do my my job and, then, <laughs> and tell people. Just keep partying. Oh my gosh. Oh. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you, though. We'll, we'll be careful. We'll still yes. fiesta, but be careful. Don't be, don't be yes. careful. <laughs> Time now, 6:47. And 68 degrees for now. After the break, the owners of a Northside pet shop say the city is jeopardizing their livelihood with heavy handed enforcement. KSAT investigates the city's actions and why the shop ended up on the nuisance property list. That's next. A Northside pet shop was labeled a nuisance property when, and flooded with dozens of city employees, executing an administrative warrant. The owners of Forever Pets say the city's aggressive approach was excessive and has threatened their decades old business. I think it was just a waste of city do city dollars that they brought all these people in. It was it was a waste of time, waste of our tax dollars. It really was. Yeah. The city tells a different story, claiming they were justified in going in after repeated violations at the store. Case and investigates Dylan Collier on the 10th stalemate that continues. When raids by the city's Dangerous Assessment Response Team, or DART, are shown on the news, they typically look like this. A heavy police presence, people in handcuffs, the status quo at a business or home purposely disrupted by a unit created 17 years ago to target the worst of the worst properties in San Antonio. In late January, DART set its sights on Forever Pets, a family-owned business that has operated on Bassey Road since the 1980s. Animal Care Services brought the location to DART's attention that month, after the city says its owners failed to come into compliance on several violations. This administrative warrant, signed by a judge, set the stage for officials from multiple city departments, including SAPD, ACS, Development Services, and Metro Health to descend on the property. Vivian Louie, who helps her elderly mother Anne run the day-to-day -day operations, counted 37 city personnel inside and outside Forever Pets that winter morning. It boggled my mind of, of all those people that were in there. Our whole parking lot was filled with nothing but law enforcement people. Attorney Paul Burgess was able to record portions of the city's enforcement action before being asked to wait outside following several heated encounters with assistant city attorney Eric Burns, the head of the DART unit. Yeah, everybody's recording. Nobody's trying to hide from you. But what we're wanting you to do is allow us to do our job. In the parking lot. Ma'am, miss, ma'am, ma'am, does she work for the city? Multiple city employees refused to identify themselves to Burgess as he tried to figure out who all was there for the warrant. You Open don't records will give you my information. Okay, I don't have your name or your badge number. You don't need it. That was one of our red flags right away was the vague notices 
from uh, department personnel that wouldn't identify themselves. So how did it get to this point? Original owner Toy Louie passed away in late 2020. His wife Ann Here you go. Come on. and daughter Come Vivian on. have tried to step in and fill the void, attempting to learn the ins and outs of operating a pet store on the fly. City records confirm visits to the property by ACS investigators ramped up in regularity in early November. Vivian was eventually given four misdemeanor citations related to the care of animals and record keeping. ACS also denied its application to continue selling pets due to the conditions inside. In January, the business received additional notices of violation, this time from city code enforcement for issues including plumbing and electrical. During an appeal before the city's Building Standards Board in early February, Vivian complained that the city gave her no guidance on how to repair the problems. I understand that as, as a business owner, if something's wrong, you walk around with them and let them know this, this, this needs to be fixed. Have they done that at this point? No, they have not. How can you tell me to fix something if I don't know exactly where to fix? The hearing? My answer is going to be no, sir. Well, respectfully. Much like the raid. My answer is going to be no, sir. Let's please move on. Was emotionally charged and addressed the board through tears. Please don't make me sell the pet door. Burns repeatedly interrupted individuals speaking on behalf of Forever Pets, saying they were addressing topics outside the scope of the appeal. Are y'all trying to destroy this business? Or when we reached out after Chair, we were that, that would be an improper right question. Okay. We want them to thrive. We want it to be a great business. Assistant City Attorney Savita Rice says the family has been walked through how to fix the store's violations and have ignored orders to stop selling pets and remove them from the property while they correct the issues. We attempted education. We attempted voluntary compliance. We came up with the roadmap to obtain that compliance so they could continue selling, and it was all met with flagrant disregard. On a recent weekday, it appeared to be business as usual inside Forever Pets, as the store's future hangs in the balance. There's not really any pet stores where you can go in really anymore, and there's animals and stuff there, and I think that's important. A widow of a World War II veteran. Uh, this is supposed to be a military city. We're not supposed to treat veterans and their families like this. It's despicable, it's sickening, to see it happening. We're left with only, they want to shut down a female-owned and Chinese-American-owned family business. That is a ridiculous assertion, and the city vehemently denies that. For KSAT Investigates, I'm Dylan Collier. Well, Vivian is scheduled to appear in municipal court Friday on four citations issued by ACS. The Building Standards Board denied the family's appeal that they were not properly served notice of violations. The store can appeal the animal sale permit denial in district court, although a city spokeswoman told KSAT the simpler route would be to correct the violations and reapply for the permit with ACS. We'll be right back.